Middle Earth was supposed to be a peaceful land, and it was only through the corruption of Morgoth that evil was born. Because of his actions, the people of Middle Earth would have to suffer tremendously, and we've got to wonder whether there was any chance that his rule could have been cut short. For example, after his first defeat at the hands of the Valar. Hey guys, it's Carl here, and in today's episode, we'll be delving into the reason why Morgoth was freed. So after the elves awakened in Middle Earth, the Valar decided that the time had come to attack Morgoth for the sake of the elves, and they managed to defeat and capture him. He was brought before them for judgement, and they sentenced him to three ages of imprisonment in the halls of Mandos, before he could stand trial once more. These years would allow Middle-earth to know peace once more. And after Morgoth's sentence was over, he claimed that he was now reformed, and he begged Manwe to forgive him. All he wanted was the chance to help the Valar, a way for him to heal the damage that he had caused. Or at least, this is what Morgoth claimed. Deep down, he hadn't changed at all. If anything, his evil and hatred had grown in prison, though Manwe couldn't see through these lies and he pardoned him. Now, it might seem like Manwe was quite naive to trust Morgoth, and that he should have known better, considering that he was the wisest being in Arda. Though if we take a closer look at his choice, we can start to make sense of it. So according to Tolkien, Manwe was free from evil, and so he wasn't able to understand it, or the way it worked. And this made him believe that Morgoth's evil was cured. After all, when the Luvatar created them, Melkor and Manwe were said to be brothers. And so perhaps Manwe felt that even though Morgoth had strayed, he could still become good, considering his nature. Now even though telepathy existed in Tolkien's mythology, you couldn't read someone's thoughts unless they were willing to share them, no matter how powerful you were. And this allowed Morgoth to take advantage of Manwe. Manwe never had a reason or motive to hide his thoughts, for he was a good being, and all of his actions were driven by good intentions. And this allowed Morgoth to read his mind, and take advantage of his mercy. To make his deception even more convincing, Morgoth made it appear as if his mind were open, though in fact he was keeping all of his real thoughts well hidden. And I know that this might sound as if the Valar were naive or gullible, though it was impossible for them to test Morgoth without becoming manipulative or deceitful themselves. Tolkien says that, How otherwise would you have it? Should Manwe and the Valar meet secrecy with subterfuge, treachery with falsehood, lies with more lies? If Melkor would usurp their rights, should they deny his? Can hate overcome hate? Nay, Manwe was wiser, or being ever open to Eru, he did his will, which is more than wisdom. He was ever open because he had nothing to conceal, no thought that it was harmful for any to know, if they could comprehend it. He goes on to say that when the Valar captured Morgoth and imprisoned him, they weren't trying to force some confession or reveal his thoughts and purpose. He was simply being punished for his evil deeds. The goal of this imprisonment was to stop Morgoth from using his power, in the hopes that he might pause for a moment to consider himself and all of his actions, and perhaps even seek repentance and forgiveness. Manwe knew that Melkor had every right to exist, to act and use his powers, and as long as he chose to repent and return to the allegiance of Iluvatar, then he must be given his freedom once more. Any other choice would be a very dangerous step. For if Manwe tried to enslave him or deny his freedom, he would have strayed from his path and abandoned his mission. Manwe's job as king was to represent Iluvatar, by keeping all of his people in Iluvatar's allegiance, and if they happened to stray, it was his job to bring them back. If he tried to deny Morgoth's freedom, then Manwe would have risked going down the path of corruption. To quote Tolkien, Yet some ruinous outburst of his despair is not the worst that might have befallen. The release was according to the promise of Manwe. If Manwe had broken this promise for his own purposes, even though still intending good, he would have taken a step upon the paths of Melkor. That is a perilous step. In that hour and act, he would have ceased to be the vicegerent of the One, becoming but a king who takes advantage over a rival whom he has conquered by force. Would we then have the sorrows that indeed befell, or would we have the Elder King lose his honor, and so pass, maybe, to a world rent between two proud lords striving for the throne? Of this we may be sure, we children of small strength, 
Any one of the Valar might have taken the parts of Melkor and become like him. One was enough. Finally, there is a quote from the book Morgoth's Ring, in which Tolkien implies that Manwë's perspective was definitely wiser than our own, and questioning his actions would be unwise. Tolkien says that, Manwë was the spirit of greatest wisdom and prudence in Ardan. He is represented as having had the greatest knowledge of the music as a whole, possessed by any one finite mind. And he alone, of all persons or minds in that time, is represented as having the power of direct recourse to and communication with Eru. He must have grasped with great clarity what even we may perceive dimly. That it was the essential mode of the process of history in Arda that evil should constantly arise, and that out of it new good should constantly come. One especial aspect of this is the strange way in which the evils of the Marer, or his inheritors, are turned into weapons against evil. What this means is that Morgoth's evil actions would eventually cause his downfall. By poisoning the two trees, stealing the Silmarils, and inciting the Noldor rebellion, Morgoth drove the Noldor elves to pursue him in Middle-earth, where they played a significant part in the resistance against his evil and he would end up using so much of his power trying to defeat them that he was left in a weakened, diminished form, which allowed the Valar to overcome him in the War of Wrath. Tolkien wrote that, Therefore, not until the last, and not then, except by the express command of Eru and by his power, was Melkor thrown utterly down and deprived forever of all power to do or to undo. And to me, this really helps to add credibility to this explanation, that Melkor's freedom was part of Iluvatar's plan, and that it was a necessary step to lead to his ultimate defeat. Anyway guys, this wraps up today's video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Do you agree with Manwë that it was best to free Melkor, or do you think things would have been better if Melkor remained imprisoned? And if so, what do you think might have happened? Would he have tried to escape? Would he have caused more mischief? I think it would be interesting to wonder how things could have been worse if he remained imprisonment. It's it's quite a, a difficult question, I suppose. I'd also like to clarify that all the quotes and writings we discussed come directly from Tolkien. There isn't any um, real speculation on my end, and if you'd like to check out the writings, I'm going to link them in the video description. So yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video, this topic, Manwë, Luvatar, Morgoth. Um, so just leave any of your thoughts in the comments below. As always, I'd like to give a quick shout out to all my patrons that choose to support this channel. Your help and support make this channel possible, and I really appreciate it. Particularly my Valar tier patrons, Michelangelo and T. Gorman, and also my Wizard tier patrons, James Todgell, Andrew Bomer, Mike Feeney, Roland Mervold, and Zumi. If you like our work on this channel and want to support us, check out our Patreon page in the video description where you can unlock some really cool perks. You can also support us by checking out our store, and by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and joining our Discord server. All of these links can be found in the video description. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe to join our fellowship today. I hope to see you all in my next video, where together we'll once again explore the magical world and lore of Middle-earth.